Thank you very much, Peter. I'm presenting on the culture of wood carving at Abri, an analysis of factors contributing to the development of the new traditional wood carving center. Um, the outline for this presentation will be based on the etymology of Abri, historical account of the master carvers, types of wood used by the carvers, sources of ideas of the carvers, the finishes that they use, factors leading to the growth of the carving in a brie, and then conclusions. I'll try to be as snappy as possible on each of the issues. A brie is located on the Equiapim Range, about uh, 23 kilometers northeast Accra, the capital of Ghana. It is more of an undulating town with an elevation of about 800 to 1,500 feet above sea level, being one of Ghana's highest points of habitat um, for the people. Abri is noted largely in Ghana for its bot botanical gardens, which attracts a lot of tourists and other social groups to the town. The traditional occupation of the people is mainly wood carving. Uh, some of them are also involved in farming and then stone quarry as well. Um, this is a, an undulating view of Abri, the town uh, we're studying at the moment. And most of the populace there are into the carving of wood. Fosu 1993 asserted that the creation of traditional arts was inspired by the ideas and thoughts common to African life. Consequently, the arts give visual meaning to those ideas. Many of those creative expressions were not controlled by the strict duplication of exactness of nature. It was the idea rather than the object purely perceived in its natural state which determined the visual meaning of the function of the work that they produce. Thus, a piece of art was, issue, uh, was issued from deeper motives than the inspiration of the moment. Wood carving at a brie, like most um, Akan areas in Ghana owe its origin to religious functions. Here, some forms were created to serve as dwelling places for various spirits, which they worshipped. Stools were also carved for the ancestors as they abode. Social functions also contributed to the creation of wood carvings at a brie and the class of persons would be defined by the kind of stools that the individual sits on, his staff that he holds or mace, the bowls that he uses, usually wooden bowls, and other artifacts um, which the previous pre presenter also enumerated a few of them. Serious wood carving started in Abri about the early 1970s when one individual who was called Jechi from the eastern part of Ghana and a group of Muslim teachers came to the center uh, to do missionary work. And uh, Jechi, who was also a carver, got attracted by the scenery where, because they were doing wood, uh, road construction, trees had been felled on the waysides. So Jachi decided to take advantage of the trees which had fallen and started carving. After a while, he took ill. And uh, when one native who was a woman helped him to regain his, his, his strength, the lady uh, begged on Jachi to teach her daughter, her uh, sons, two sons, how to do the carving activity since she found it very interesting. He therefore trained them without a fee and these young men 
were uh, the people who started the business of wood carving at Abri. Um, but unfortunately, these young men were sacked from the places where they were dwelling, their houses. They were ejected because the people who found them doing the carving said that these figures were associated with um, strange beliefs, evil beliefs, and therefore they feel that keeping them there will bring ill luck to the house and other nearby tenants. They did not understand why young men who should be going to school will engage themselves in wood carving and that kind of occupation, so they were driven out of their house in around 1974. This is not to say that uh, there were no other people carving in wood, but the establishment of the Abri wooden carving, especially, was centered about around these men which we are talking about. Somehow they managed to survive and eventually relocated um, at the roadsides of the Abri township, where a lot of tourists got attracted to their unique skills. There has been a dramatic increase of master carvers at Abri, the town within these uh, two within these two decades since its existence. In the 1984, it is uh, in the 1987 to 1990, they had barely 35 master carvers and were increased to 120 by 1998. The master covers since 2006 and now have increased dram dramatically, ranging from two, um, 300 to more, with about 250 of them owing shops to display their own works. The other shops are owned by traders who were not covers but commissioned wood carvers to work for them. Even these shops have about two or five carvers who helped as owners. In other words, beside the master carvers, there were several other carvers who helped in the job that they do there. Though the population of the people who worked at the center is about 2,600, it is only about 20% who are carvers. The rest are apprentices and shop owners who most of the time are seen doing sandpapering of the wooden products and giving finishes to the work. About half of the shops have at least a woman as a shop attendant. And it was exciting during my um, study to find out that they had three women also involved in the carving activity. I said exciting because in their indigenous uh, practice, it was a taboo for women to be involved in the carving activity. And so we see uh, a development here because of education, people daring into the carving activity. The rest of the women who were found there were known to be wives of the carvers who were also there to sell works whilst their men, their husbands uh, were doing the carving. And children, of the carvers were also there to earn monies, and some of them were also trained as apprentices of the wood carving activity. Wood, which is the primary material for the carvers at Abri, is not abundant, unfortunately, there. They have to travel to a distance to get them. They travel to the lower part of the eastern region in order to fetch wood, and currently, there is prohibition on the indiscriminate falling of trees in a brick. Therefore, one has to travel quite far to be able to fall uh, one tree in order to produce the work. That tells um, the populace the, the need to ensure perpetuation of the material that they use, and therefore the need for tree planting. So the nearness of Though the nearness of uh, material is a factor in locating an industry, unfortunately, currently, uh, Abri, for Abri, the nearness of material to location is no longer the issue here. The commonest wood which is used 
are um, outlined on the slide. We have the local names and then other uh, botanical names. There's a wood which they call Osese in the local language, Holara, Hina, Floribunda. They have the Nyamidria and the rest of the woods which have been outlined um, there. And during the study, I noticed that the uh, Sese, the Holarinhena uh, Floribunda, is the most used and suitable to most of the carvers who were involved in the wood carving. And they, because they found it easy carving it and manipulating it with the finishes. There are, however, some bylaws among the carvers as to the use of such uh, woods. They claim that it rots or decay with time and it's nearly spoiled their trade sometimes. Uh, there, however, other woods like mahogany and cedar are also used, but on rare cases are such woods uh, normally used. Sources of ideas for the covers. The wood covers get ideas from different traditional sources as well as neo-traditional sources. Neo-traditional here referring to sources which are not typically the Ghanaian way of carving, but somehow acculturated by tourist interest. So they get their ideas from old works from all over Africa, ranging from mask, which the previous speaker showed us slides about, and other forms which are created for traditional rituals uh, in the past. The Abri Industrial Center has its own style and techniques of producing their carvings. Indeed, the early carvers at the center said that in the 1970s uh, to the 80s, they were carving combs, bowls, masks, and drums, and similar works of arts. And other works which were commissioned typically by their counterparts who were their clients from Mosi and from the Hausa descents. And they had no specific style attributed to them, especially the new traditional ones. However, in the early 1990s, they obtained a new style which was quite different from their traditional um, carvings. And these works were of the nature as Mostly, they were conceptual. Um, slides show examples of some of the themes which were captured from their neo-traditional influences. Um, the first slide plate two is the thinking together, which in some cases it was noted to have been captured as stop thinking, which portrays a man and a woman, supposedly couples in a thoughtful sitting posture facing each other. And then there is another one which, not so clear there, but it has been captioned the climber. And in Akan language, they say, Ufru diapa na ipiaun, which literally means that it is the one who climbs a good tree that is helped. And other household items are also produced. In other words, if you climb a bad tree, you are not helped uh, during your bid to climb. It is a proverb that suggests that good morals are much appreciated than bad morals. Another style which is common to the carvers is what is termed as shadows. And these were rendered in round and in relief. And these forms got their name shadow from the silhouette, which is a painting technique that deals with representing forms in black in monochrome, one color forms without necessarily bringing out details. And they use this means to create works which are freestanding or in relief forms. The facial details of usually such works are not given natural treatment, but they are just represented in forms either exaggerated or giving some level of abstraction, non-realistic. And some of the themes which they usually work on in this silhouette, as you could see on the slide, uh, the unity. And the unity is the one on your uh, plate four, 
which deals with different people coming together, trying to pick up a common object, and then the other one which they call the thinking man. There were several others which were also made from such material. Another form of relief are those which depends on nature um, and the form of the tree for its creation. The wood normally used for such works are uh, fiscos plasticoides, which are plastic trees, paras parasitic trees that gives some interesting forms of movement in their um, trunks. Examples as um, these ones. And they produce usually relief carvings on such um, trees to give a very impressive effect, both depicting local culture and also depicting values associated with the people. Wood finishes which the people adapt also vary. And as we are very much previewed to, wood adapts so many types of finishes. But at a breed, their finishes has a particular style and techniques which they employ. Previously, the wood covers were using fire to burn the, the woodwork after they have carved it in order to get a very brownish effect and then black before polishing the wax. Sometimes they were also using shoe polish and other inorganic colors to be able to do that. And for wood preservation, after carving potassium and permanganate, which gives a black coloring to the wood and prevents it from decaying is applied. To the Akan and most Ghanaian ethnic groups, the color black is very symbolic. And therefore, they applied such finishes to the color. Uh, they, it symbolizes tradition, symbolizes antiquity, symbolizes beauty, and it symbolizes history. So most of the works are given such finishes. The functions of their work are also uh, numerous. The role that the wooden products play in Ghana, Ghanaian culture cannot be overemphasized. It stretches from religious, social, political, historical, and therapeutic. There are several factors which have led to the growth of the wood carving industry, and that factors uh, could be traced from political through to education, and then to other factors such as non-governmental organizations coming in to express interest to support them, either for their interest in the wood itself or in the products, which is the artifacts. In conclusion, I should say that the people of Abri in Ghana have very impressive wood carving activity, and they are really making good use of wood. Given the required attention, the center will undoubtedly flourish in its usage of wood for artifacts. Thank you very much.